Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about lipid profile test. Lipid profile which is also called as lipid panel is one of the important tests to assess the lipid levels within the serum. One of the important lipid is present as LDL cholesterol and this cholesterol is also available in another form HDL cholesterol. So LDL is the low density lipoprotein which is the carrier for cholesterol and HDL is the high density lipoprotein. This LDL cholesterol is also called as bad cholesterol whereas HDL cholesterol is considered as good cholesterol. So in the lipid profile we can estimate the levels of LDL as well as HDL cholesterol. Apart from the cholesterol levels the lipids within the body also include triglycerides. So again the serum triglyceride levels are going to be checked in the lipid panel. These triglycerides can be transported in the form of VLDL very low density lipoproteins. So VLDL is the main transporter of triglycerides. Then what is the relation between the triglycerides and cholesterol? The two forms of the lipid. The serum triglycerides can also add to the total cholesterol level by 20%. That's why in the patients with high triglyceride levels, the total cholesterol levels are also increased because the triglycerides can share 20% of total cholesterol content. So within the lipid panel, total cholesterol levels, HDL cholesterol levels as well as serum triglyceride levels are going to be directly measured by using the chemical reagents. On the other hand, LDL cholesterol can be calculated. Otherwise, it can also be directly measured by using suitable reagents. But in the most of the laboratories, in the estimation of lipid panel, LDL cholesterol levels are calculated. So the levels of LDL cholesterol can be estimated from the total cholesterol levels. Now from the total cholesterol levels, if we deduct HDL cholesterol and the triglycerides divided by 5, because the triglycerides share 20% of total cholesterol. So when we deduct the HDL levels as well as 20% of triglyceride levels from the total cholesterol, we can get the levels of LDL. So this is the calculation of LDL cholesterol. In this way, LDL cholesterol can be calculated from total cholesterol, HDL and triglyceride levels. But in few of the patients who are having high percentage of triglycerides, this calculation is somewhat invalid. In such patients, we can go for direct measurement of LDL cholesterol. But commonly in many of the laboratories, lipid panel estimation involves calculation of LDL cholesterol from total cholesterol. Similarly, the levels of VLDL can be estimated as triglycerides divided by 5. And the results of lipid panel also indicate the ratio such as total cholesterol versus LDL cholesterol ratio. Similarly, the ratio of LDL to HDL, all these are calculated and reported in the results of lipid panel. Then what is the normal role of these lipoproteins and among them which is more important and on elevation of this lipoprotein what happens? All these things we will discuss in this video. So the diet which is having the fatty component from this fat the cholesterol is going to be released and this cholesterol can be absorbed at the ileum through the special transporters. Now the cholesterol can enter into the membrane where it is going to be converted into cholesterol esters and then these cholesterol esters are going to be absorbed through chylomicrons and the remaining portion of chylomicron is called as chylomicron remnant. This chylomicron remnant which is rich in cholesterol is taken by the liver. Now by uptake of chylomicron remnants cholesterol is going to be stored in the liver then it is going to be released as another lipoprotein VLDL. Now this VLDL is rich in triglycerides. Again from the VLDL few of the triglycerides are converted into free fatty acids so that it can be secreted as LDL. So LDL is the important lipoprotein which is responsible for cardiovascular complications when its levels are elevated. When this LDL cholesterol levels are elevated it results in the deposition within the intima of the blood vessels. So within the blood vessel normally the RBC cells can move freely but by increased LDL cholesterol there will be a deposition and this deposition when further increased it can increase the oxidation of LDL 
This oxidized LDL can form a fatty streaks resulting in foam cells. These foam cells, when combined with coagulation factors, platelets and other inflammatory mediators, it may form a dense fibrous cap resulting in etheroma. So, etheroma is a cap that is rich in the fatty deposits such as LDL cholesterol. Now, in presence of etheroma, the blood circulation is somewhat inhibited resulting in atherosclerosis. Now, when this LDL cholesterol is elevated, it may result in cardiovascular complications. Particularly, it can increase the irregular heartbeat as well as cardiac arrhythmias. Some palpitations can be observed within the patients. And we can also observe the CHD, coronary heart disease, resulting in some angina, fatigue, and even stroke in the patients. Similarly, the elevated levels of LDL can also affect the peripheral artery disease, resulting in some leg cramps, some discomfort in the leg as well as feet. All these are because of elevated levels of LDL cholesterol. That's why it is called as bad cholesterol. Now let us see when this test is required. Lipid profile test is important in the patients who are having the risk of elevated cholesterol levels. Particularly the cholesterol in the form of LDL cholesterol is more important. Sometimes triglycerides can also increase the total cholesterol levels which also increase the risk of cardiovascular complications. So in all these conditions lipid profile test should be done in order to assess both cholesterol as well as triglyceride levels within the patient. So particularly in the patients with few of the symptoms resembling high cholesterol levels such as some chest pain and irregular heartbeats, palpitations and patients with some dizziness, lightheadedness or patients who experience a severe headache which is suddenly developed, similarly some unexpected fatigue and some confusion in the patients, numbness in the feet as well as leg which indicates that there is reduced blood supply to the arteries and increased bloating, the fullness of the stomach because of increased cholesterol levels and some blurred vision or blackening of vision and drooling of the face as well as some eyelids, slurred speech and difficulty in speaking. All these symptoms indicate there may be elevated levels of cholesterol but these symptoms may also present with other clinical conditions. So particularly when these symptoms are associated with any risk factors such as age greater than 45 years or patients with any family history of elevated cholesterol. In such patients, lipid profile test should be done in order to assess the cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So what are the risk factors which increase the cholesterol and triglyceride levels? One of the important risk factors for elevated levels of cholesterol is the hypertension. So when the patients are having the hypertension for several years, there may be an increased risk of elevated cholesterol. Similarly, in the patients with diabetes, where the elevated glucose levels may also increase the cholesterol levels, or patients with any renal dysfunction or renal disease, similarly in the obese patients with overweight, which increase the risk of elevated cholesterol levels, or if you have the conditions such as pregnancy, where there is a chance of elevation of cholesterol levels, similarly in the patients with hypothyroidism, and patients with chronic smoking, or with sedentary lifestyle, all these are the risk factors which increase the cholesterol levels and they may lead to few of the cardiovascular complications. So in such patients, lipid panel test should be done regularly in order to prevent any coronary heart disease. So what is the normal range of these cholesterol levels? First of all, it is the normal LDL levels which are expressed in the terms of milligram per deciliter. So when these LDL levels are less than 100 milligrams per deciliter, then it is considered as optimal but when their levels are in between 100 to 130 then it is considered as above optimal so at this stage the patient should take some care and lifestyle modification should be done such that increased exercise taking the diet rich in fibers quitting of smoking reduced alcoholism intake of fiber rich dry fruits all these can reduce the risk of coronary heart disease at this stage. But when these LDL levels are increased up to 160, so they are in between 130 to 160, then they are considered as borderline high. 
but these LDL levels can also be increased up to 190 which indicates the high levels of LDL and it can also be elevated greater than 190 which indicates very high levels of LDL. So at these stages, very strict conditions should be maintained along with drug uses such as statins in order to reduce triglycerides, fibrates can be used, cholesterol absorption inhibitors like HDMI, nicotinic acid derivatives such as niacin, all such drugs can be used along with diet and exercise to reduce the LDL levels. So in the patients with very high LDL levels, the goal of treatment is such that the LDL level should be reduced less than 130. But in the patients with more risk factors, the goal is less than 100. And sometimes in the patients, the goal of LDL levels is also less than 70 microgram per deciliter in order to reduce coronary heart disease. So as the number of risk factors increase, the goal is more restricted so that LDL level should be strictly reduced to very lower levels. Now let us see the normal triglyceride levels. So normally when they are less than 150 it is considered as optimal and when it is in between 150 to 199 it is considered as borderline high. Similarly when they are above 200 and less than 499 it is considered as high but when they are above 500 it is considered as very high. Particularly fibrates can be used to reduce the triglyceride levels along with the niacin. Now let us the normal HDL levels. HDL is considered as good cholesterol but the normal range is in between 40 to 60 mg per dl. So when HDL levels are less than 40 it is considered as low HDL levels and when it is above 60 it is considered as high HDL levels. Generally the HDL level should be maintained in between 40 to 60 such that it can protect the formation of atherosclerosis. Finally, let us see the total cholesterol levels. So when the total cholesterol levels are less than 200, it is considered as desirable. And when it is in between 200 to 240, it is considered as borderline high. And when it is greater than 240, it is considered as high levels of total cholesterol. So in such conditions, again, diet control should be maintained along with exercise and use of lipid lowering drugs such as statins and fibrates. All this can bring the total cholesterol levels less than 200 to minimize the risk of coronary heart disease. So that's about this lipid profile test. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.